Okay, I think we're all set to start. Uh, we have uh, 14 participants connected today. Our presenter, André Jelema, is ready and connected. So uh, I can again welcome all of you to this e-agricultural webinar on the Agricultural Open Data Package. Um, today uh, we have with us André Jelema from Data Impact, who will present the Agricultural Open Data Package to you. And after his presentation, you are all invited to uh, ask all the questions you might have to André. So the Agricultural Open Data Package is a resource for governments to take the next step in publishing open data they have generated or collected. In this document, six policy areas are suggested where open data can support the agricultural sector and it identifies 14 data categories to realize impact in the agricultural sector. For each data category, the potential use of the data by the agricultural sector and the estimated effort to publish this data from government sources are discussed and examples of implementation and initiatives that support the interoperability of each data category are provided. It also highlights 10 examples of open data in action, demonstrating how governments are harnessing data to address sustainable agricultural and food security around the world. Andre is here with us today, and he will make a presentation on uh, the ACPAC. Uh, Andre has a background in open data, spatial modeling, remote sensing, and agriculture and has a PhD from the Wageningen University in the Netherlands. André, welcome uh, to this webinar and thank you for being here with us to present today. Um, I will give you the floor right away so we don't lose any more time and uh, I would also be happy if you um, make very clear to our participants how uh, they can uh, interact uh, with the Agricultural Open Data Package and what you need from them and their colleagues. Welcome, André. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for this, uh, for this kind introduction and uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, I learned from the, from the chat box that we have uh, quite a diverse crowd, so I think we can have a very interesting uh, discussion on the, uh, on the Agricultural Open Data Package, which I will uh, introduce to you. And I also introduce my objectives behind this, this presentation. But let me first uh, uh, sketch the context of the Agriculture Open Data Package before I get into the objectives of this webinar. So <clears throat> basically the, the Agriculture Open Data Package is a curated resource to inspire and guide governments to start realizing impact of open data and to harness open data to support their agriculture policies. It's part of a series of open up guides hosted by the Open Data Charter uh, other examples are the Anti-Corruption Open Up Guide and the Climate Open Up Guide. It has been developed by Godon and ODI, and it's co-sponsored by OD4D. The first launch of the, uh, the Open Data, uh, the ACPAC, uh, has been at the uh, OGP meeting in Paris last December. And this is a beta release, which we are now uh, looking forward to evaluate, to get comments and to improve it, and to get into a alpha uh, release. So currently there are three documents. So there's the online document, agpac.info. Here's all the information uh, of the agpac. And there are two communication uh, documents, one in English and one in French. So, <clears throat> For me, there are a number of objectives um, of this webinar. So first of all, um, I'd like to introduce the agpac and I'd like to get uh, feedback from you. Uh, on the e agricultural forum uh, discussion or by questions at the end of this webinar. I'd like to spend some time explaining why governments should, should get engaged in open data for agriculture. I want to give, uh, share a few examples. Governments um, making use of open data to realize policy objectives. Um, I would like to give a bit more introduction into the agriculture open data package and I want to explain about the next steps um, after this webinar. How we want to proceed. So why should governments get engaged in open data for agriculture? 
Governments are collecting enormous amount of information, not only about the agricultural sector or the, or the value chain, but about a lot of aspects which are relevant for, <coughs> uh, for stakeholders in agricultural value chain, talking about the weather, elevation data, even the policy documents they're, they're uh, producing, uh, farm advice. All of this information is relevant to, to the whole agricultural value chain. So we're not only talking about um, farmers, but we're also talking about input suppliers and processors, traders, talking about service providers, financial service providers, extension, logistical services, and about the enabling environment of the government itself so at the local or regional level, uh, about science, and about international organizations or NGOs. So there's a big database of public data currently not available, but has great re uh, reuse value for the agricultural sector actors. So when I um, when I look at this from the perspective of the, of the open data package, um, the ACPAC introduces six policy perspectives of why governments how governments could make use of their own data to realize their own policy um, objectives. So one of them is empowering um, empowering the farmers, for example, by providing market prices, but also about um, this is also about the sharing of information about official um, companies, records to companies, land ownership. Um, there's a lot of information, um, yeah, with the government that that could help the farmers to um, um, to know their rights better, basically. Um, there, each government has an uh, extension service, there are uh, research institutes, uh, a lot of data is being collected, part of the data is being shared via an extension service, but if the data is being made available open, openly, um, yeah, um, information services based on ICT can be developed either by the government or by private actors and there can be a much wider spread of this information um, to enhance um, agricultural, agricultural production. Um, for the financial sector, they want to de-risk their, their finance. If I give a loan to a farmer, do I get it back? Um, all of this, um, the government has a lot of information to make better estimates. On, um, of the harvest success of, of farmers um, or just to know where different programs are being uh, rolled out so there's more security of doing a, a rural finance not only of in the interest of the rural finance service that themselves so they can get their um, loans uh, they have a lower risk of, of losing their own their loans but it also stimulates the rural finance itself so it maybe it pushes them to um, or persuades them to actually uh, start providing agricultural loan, which are currently uh, only available in a limited way. Um, other agricultural sector um, actors like input suppliers would benefit from knowing the best practices, knowing which which um, uh, inputs are being recommended, how much is being produced in the different sectors of, of a country. And all in all, it helps to enforce the policies um, of, of the government um, and also providing inf more information about their projects and about their, uh, their budgets, uh, making, uh, making the government more trans uh, transparent, but also more efficient. Um, so, and, um, in my presentation, there's a lot of emphasis on the wealth of, of data that governments have um, and their role as a data provider. But to make open data work, there's a lot more needed. There needs to be a good technical infrastructure. There needs to be knowledge among all actors how to use the information uh, that's available. There needs to be communities built of organizations, <clears throat> um, IT organizations or um, yeah, all the way following the, the, the data chain down to the end users um, to make sure that the information is being used in the most efficient uh, way. These information chains need to be supported in a, in a sustainable way. There needs to be a business case behind it. A lot of projects currently are um, just um, driven by, by subsidies. There needs to be a change there. And also, a lot of private sector actors are um, 
yeah, are holding data and governments can play a role there also to persuade these actors to, to share their data to the benefit of the agricultural sector. So this is a lot of a lot of theory. So I'd like to share three examples. Um, and at the forum, you'll find more examples of governments that actually um, yeah, use their their data to um, to realize policy objectives. So meanwhile, I'll move to the internet. <clears throat> so this is um, the Akmagnet um, portal from the Indian government, and I always like to refer to this one, and um, not because the um, the portal itself is very it's very fancy but the story behind it is very interesting so the in 2003 the federal government realizes that um sorry there are many many markets in india regional markets temporary markets but the farmers only have uh, had used to have restricted market access so only to to the nearby um to the, to the nearby markets uh, down due to uh, regulations so in 2003, the federal government um, tried to uh, change those regulations, um, uh, but after evaluation, they also discovered that uh, the actual situation has not uh, changed too much. So they decided on um, on additional me measures, and they uh, they launched this act magnet uh, portal. Um, sorry. <laughs> I first have to explain that um, so the restricted access of the farmers has, has the result that there's a lack of competition so there are high market fees uh, they get low prices at the markets there are a lot of intermediaries intermediaries and at the end of the day the uh, the consumers are um, are having to pay a, a high price so to break that that the power of the, the middleman they uh, first made this uh, model act and later made this uh, this portal uh, so the portal gives all kinds of interesting information, just as an example. Uh, it's possible to get the price information of, of, of different commodities. Oops. Um, um, let's just look at the green bananas for, for today of all different markets in, the, in India. But it's not only providing the, the price information, it's also providing um, information about um, the market rules. So what are what are the fees in different markets? Um, who are the functionaries? What are the laws? Um, what are the, what are the standards in India or at the markets uh, on packages and grading and and labeling? So really to enable to um, to make yeah to make the mark the farmer more independent from the middleman and and um, allow him to organize his own um, trade. Um, another example I generally like to, to um, share, it's a portal it's being built by Wageningen University, but it's been commissioned by the Dutch um, government, and it's based on the, um, the, the open data figures of the agricultural survey in, in Holland. And it basically provides quick overviews um, and um, different interactive charts. Um, for this to English. Yeah, the different. Uh, so you can look at the different sectors, or you can look at the different teams, and it provides you data, for example, on the dairy farming. It provides all the information really in, in an economic context. So you can see the numbers of farmers, uh, farms going down, the number of um, animals more or less stay the same except for the uh, last couple of years that it's increasing and the numbers of animals per farm is really increasing but you can also look at the economic performance of these of these farms uh, a lot of indicators are just being provided nicely nicely together uh, nicely um, interpreted already so this is the cross marching of the dairy farms in uh, in holland and how that's changing um, Across years in, in, in time, uh, but it also gives uh, spatial maps of where actually the dairy farming in Holland is taking place, um, and what are the, where um, where dairy farming in, in Holland is most um, intense, and you can do this for the different different sectors. So a lot of information is being provided uh, to uh, can be used by um, by different value chain actors, or it can be used by regional 
policy makers to make more efficient policies on the agricultural sector. Um, what I like about this portal is a lot is that it's actually based on individual farm data. Uh, it's being made available, but it's made of, um, in, in many views, but in an, aggregate, in an aggregated way. So you can see the results based on individual farms, uh, but it's not um, hampering the, the privacy. So my third example is the Carto um, from the government of Burkina Faso. So the story behind this website is that they wanted to make a, <clears throat> a map of the potential production in uh, Burkina Faso. And being a Sahel country, the availability of water is uh, very important to know because, um, yeah, whether a field is irrigated or not matters a lot in the agricultural potential. But the availability of water was not available uh, for many locations in the country, so they decided to build a, an open data portal and invited other ministries uh, to, to add their data, but not only the ministries, but also NGOs and companies to share the data about the water availability in the different parts of the country. And it's not a full national um, map, but at some point there's quite detailed information about well, this is about sanitation, but about uh, the availability of um, of water in the in the country, and all the all of these organizations can just um, share this data. So for me, this is really an example that an open data initiative does not need to be big to have um, to have real meaning and a real real impact. So I'm going back to the to my presentation. So here are my three examples, um, there are more examples, uh, but we will not all discuss them in this presentation. You can just see them when you go to the to the forum. Um, and in my opening note, there's a link to uh, actually yeah, to, to many of the examples in the, in the act pack. And I'm really yeah, looking forward to, to your response, um, how you see these examples, but also I'm looking forward to other examples of other governments making use of open data to, to realize impacts, to realize their, their policy um, objectives. Mm. So a little bit more detail about the ECPAC itself. So the ECPAC is aim, uh, aiming to support governments um, to realize impact of open data. It links policy perspectives to, to data and then it details the data categories being, being identified. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and it also links to key implementation resources, so basically to must-reads um, for, for governments, but they're also interest for, interesting for other sp stakeholders. Um, must-read resources to, um, to work on an open data um, policy. And then it's discussing potential government roles, but that part I already uh, shared earlier in the presentation. So in the heart of the ACPAC, there's this um, there's this matrix. Basically, it's um, pointing at the main groups of, of data that can be available uh, can be found in, uh, in administration. So looking at administration, legislation data, socioeconomic data, natural resources, um, economic data, detailing it into key categories. So not really going down all the way to the to the data sets. And linking that to the six policy um, perspectives I earlier discussed. Um, um, yeah, what I what I learned uh, while building the ACPAC is that actually the official records, which are um, uh, records as a result of, of legislation, so for example, records of companies, but also land registration uh, um, and so on, can have quite a big impact if it just becomes available as open data. So other um, organizations can, can can source on that and make um, make information service to the different um, different actors around the, the agricultural sector so each of these data categories um, they're being detailed in the in the ACPAC itself so I'm just going back to the internet and I'm going to show here uh, one example So oh, um, in this case, it will be the example of the production advice data, just to um, 
yeah, to, demonstrate, to, to show a little bit what kind of information is behind here. So it gives a description what is actually met with production advice data, so data related to crop selection and crop and land management. Typically found extension services and government research institutes. So concretely, yeah, it's data on uh, cultivars, land races, crop selection advice, crop calendars, economic um, recommendations, fertilizer recommendations. And the rationale of making this available is that, um, like I earlier said in my introduction, um, the data is there, but having it shared as open data and um, possibility of um, building um, IT based uh, information services on it um, will make it more make it more easy to to widely distribute it and to uh, to share it so the main impact expected is at the um, improvement of the agricultural practice to itself but it's also interested for for agri finance um, already for the reason that um, if good agricultural practice is shared more widely and more adopted it lowers risks um, but it also gives evaluation criteria to whether or not to, to provide a loan. Um, it's interesting for the, the for the value chain, for the input supplies, for the what uh, what what is the expected uptake of different uh, different inputs, uh, and it, and all in all, it enforces the the policies behind the, the extension uh, the, ex the extension recommendations. Um, so if we go further down, different use cases are suggested. Uh, there's a discussion on the readiness. Is, is it easy or for a government to open this? Well, in this case, that will really depend on, on where you are, if information is already digital or it's only paper-based. There are different examples of implementations, organizations that already share this kind of data. Uh, um, it links to inter interoperability initiative. Um, I'm not going to discuss that all in detail. Uh, and in this case, it ends with a in nice use case of uh, the Ethiopian government who's sharing um, her information on, uh, from the extension services um, via the hotline 8028, which is actually a, a service to, uh, which can be called for free to the farmers and there they can get um, yeah, their farm advice following the, the crop calendars of the, of the main uh, food crops in, the, in Ethiopia. Going back to the presentation, no. It's this one, yes. Going back to the presentation. Um, yeah. So the, then the agriculture open data package link, links to key implementation resources. I'm also not going to discuss that all in detail, but just introduce the structure uh, behind it a bit. So it's important to, to link to local needs and opportunities, and they're good resources um, um, to, to read about it and to, uh, to give you implementation strategies of that. So the World Bank Open Data Toolkit and the FAO. Um, opportunities are uh, the linkages to uh, to uh, to the tech sector um, in the different countries. Uh, it's important to consider the open data readiness, how much effort actually needs to be undertaken, and where are the the strengths and the weaknesses in open data readiness in a, in a country. So the World Bank made a resource for that to uh, to assess that in more detail. It's important to um, consider responsible open data co uh, publication, which is about uh, power differences between different uh, or that can emerge by opening um, opening data. Um, it's about data ownership, but it's also about being responsible about uh, starting an open data uh, portal, but keeping the data in there also up to date. Because if people are building services on it, then um, yeah, there need to, there needs to be a reliable data uh, source behind it. It's always good to first harvest the the low hanging fruit. Uh, which could be as simple as publishing the, the latest um, um, agricultural survey uh, data. Um, and it's important to link to the global ecosystem for open data, um, except for, for governments. There's um, 
a lot of international organizations are publishing a lot of a uh, lot of data. Um, NASA, ESA is doing it, and there, um, yeah, there's the 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 ring from CIRT that tries to to link all the different open data sources uh, together. So what's next? So currently we're evaluating and collecting feedback and use cases um, on uh, on the ACPAC. On so we're really looking forward to, uh, yeah, to to your use cases or your experiences with with, with government and open data. Um, and from there we want to move from the beta version to to the alpha version. Uh, so at the forum we're looking at yeah at examples uh, data uh, data sets you. Uh, think are extremely important to be shared by by governments uh, challenges uh, you've seen or you've overcome experiences and uh, yeah what, what what can we learn from uh, from the community at, uh, at the agricultural forum this was the, the end of the presentation Thank you very much, uh, Andre, for this presentation. I am sure that this uh, will uh, raise quite a few of questions, too. Um, while uh, you are uh, typing in your questions in the chat box, I share again the link to the e-agricultural discussion. So this is the direct link to the first section of the discussion. Uh, as said before, you will have to register on the platform and uh, log in in order to be able to comment and share your examples, data sets, challenges and experiences with the community of practice and give your feedback on ACPAC. Uh, I will share um, email with all the participants and people who have registered uh, with this link and uh, also details on how to register. So please, any questions, type them in in the chat box. We will take a few minutes for this, and then uh, I will give the floor back to Andrew, uh, Andre to, um, who, will, who will try to answer your questions. So take some time, and we will be back in two minutes. <laughs> 